Well, so as stated, I'm going to talk about the graceful exit, or hopefully what I felt would be a graceful exit when I um, submitted this talk, which is the call for participation was about the same time as I was resigning from the humanitarian open street map team. And I thought by now I would have some thoughts that I could share with everyone, which fortunately was true. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what we'd be doing with the next 45 minutes. So I've also been calling it a little bit in my head, how not to rage quit, um, which I think is very important. I was then looking for one of those signs, because um, I was envisioning like a workplace safety sign, and it would be like, our community's had this many days since we've had a rage quit. <laughs> but I discovered it's Velociraptor Awareness uh, Month, so don't be a statistic. <laughs> so the focus of this talk is going to be on open communities, but Honestly, I've learned a lot from leaving jobs, leaving volunteer work outside of open collaborative communities. And I think it can apply to a lot of uh, parts of life. Uh, but first, some background on me. I can, I'm a geographer and a technologist. Uh, currently, I'm the chief technology officer of the Cadasta Foundation, which I just joined two months ago, uh, which was part of this transition, was moving on to a new employment. Uh, we're building an open source global platform for helping communities document their land rights. Uh, I also serve on the board of directors of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. I've been the chairperson there for about six months. And I'm a member of the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, which is an organization I also co-founded, and a member of OSGEO. So I sort of sit in that open geo community, hence the geographer technologist. Uh, and this was largely inspired by I resigned as executive director of the humanitarian open stream app team roughly around February of this year. And as I said, have transitioned to a new job. And I started thinking about the other communities I've transitioned over the years through. And some went well, others not so well. Um, and so a little further background about me and open source. Um, I've been consciously and aware of using open source since around 1999. I ran Mandrake back then. Mm -hmm. Uh, it ate my term paper, but uh, I forget, I've forgiven Linux. Uh, but I didn't really get involved in the collaboration realm of open source till around 2008. And for me, this in some ways was probably good, because in 1999 I was a student. Um, I don't just dip my toe into something, I dive in. And what I mean by that is if I join a sports team, somehow I end up being the captain, I end up founding nonprofits, I... Um, I was volunteering once at a horse shelter and I ended up with a full-time job. So if you're someone who goes all in, this talk definitely applies to you, but those who are able to moderate themselves, there's still definitely some points that are useful. Um, and I wanted to mention, I was thinking about this quite a bit, a uh, week and a half ago with State of the Map US, which is the US OpenStreetMap conference. And a friend and I started it, and we had 70 people. We were at the Georgia Convention Center, and we were, had one room in the back, and we were just really excited. It said OpenStreetMap on the digital sign out front. A week and a half ago, it was about 800 people, and it was at the United Nations, and I wasn't involved in the planning at all. So my level of involvement in communities is around the 70 people with let's do this the first time, not the six years later where all of a sudden you're at the United Nations. And changing those roles can be great. Uh, as I said, it would be difficult for me to deal with a conference of that scale. That's not where my skill set is. So I wanted to do a quick audience poll. Um, first of all, who's made a change in their role in some sort of community previously? OK, most of you. Who felt like the change went well? <laughs> Uh, for you. <laughs> Who thinks it went well for the community? <laughs> and if anyone wants to raise their hand and say you've had a change that didn't go well for you or the community, feel free to raise your hand or think about it a little bit. So as humans, we're used to change. Uh, and I think about a couple situations where a change went badly and there's something I could have done to make it better. Uh, the first one I think about was actually a job. I had this job working at Target, 
Uh, basically, all the dot coms had crashed is around 2001. I didn't lose my job because I stayed in school, but I agreed with some friends to go get jobs at Target. And one of the friends didn't end up getting the job for some reason, and I was basically restocking shelves. I was told, look, you're a woman. Go organize the purses and contraceptives, which I did for that one shift. And then I never showed up again. It's Target. They have, I don't know how many employees. They probably figured out I wasn't coming back. But I probably could have at least you know, called and said, hey, you guys are sexist. I'm not coming back. It's something I could have done differently. But that's a minor one. Another one which I'm a little more embarrassed of is I was a treasurer for a roller derby league. And I broke my ankle really badly. I had two surgeries that year. I couldn't drive. I was on crutches for a long time. And I hadn't done the finances that well. And it was even less fun when I couldn't body check people at practice. And I'm sure I left a mess for the next person. But that roller derby league still exists today. They have four teams, huge amounts of people go to their bouts. Someone figured the finances out. Though, the lessons I've learned from that is I will not be a treasurer for any organization under any circumstances again, uh, is how I can avoid it in the future. So I wanted to talk about what are the reasons for changing your role. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, I've been so excited to talk to all of you that I haven't advanced my slides. There we go. Uh, Kathleen Danielson gave a great talk at PyCon this year uh, about avoiding burnout and other essential uh, essentials for open source care. And you'll find that there's some aspects of this that are very similar. Because if you imagine you avoid burnout, then maybe you don't want to change your role, depending on your circumstances. But of course, life isn't always that simple. So a couple of reasons, uh, physical or mental health issues is a, is a pretty common reason you might want to change your role. Change of job, suffering a loss or a trauma, Overall life changes, increased responsibility elsewhere, or maybe the community is changing and it's not right for you anymore. Maybe there's 800 people going to the conference. But I think what we need to remember, just because you want to change is the right reason. You don't necessarily need to quantify this. Especially, you know, we put our hearts and soul into open source. Even if you're paid to do it, often it ends up being a lot of other work. We're really passionate about it. But if you need to change, it's something we should all accept. When I was writing this talk, I was debating how personal I was going to be. Because what was really difficult about changing my role is I framed it as because you want to change. Um, but one of the major things that changed my role is my father was diagnosed last June with terminal cancer. And I was skipping holidays to go do things like speak at FOSS Asia, go to LinuxConf Australia, go to hackathons, you name it. And I was living in Jakarta, Indonesia at the time. All of a sudden, living on the other side of the rural world seemed really far away, as opposed to previous to that. Um, and at the m that moment, I really wanted to leave hot immediately. Uh, I had a lot emotionally invested in that job. I, and I say job because I was going to be paid to do it, but it was really a lifestyle. I had co-founded the organization. We had been through growing pains. We had really worked a lot together. And other people were starting to transition as well, because the community had grown. But this has really changed my view when people make changes. Uh, because I hadn't really suffered a lot of dr dramatic news in my life before. And now when someone starts changing and acting differently than you previously thought, I now just assume, I assume something big is going on in their life, or at least think empathetically. Because uh, you know, you can't, your project can't always be the center of your existence. You have family and friends, and they're really, really important. My closest friends in the organization knew, but that was it as far as the community. But once again, you don't need weighty reasons. It can simply be because you want to. So, what are the key signs? And these align very closely with Kathleen Danielson's talk about avoiding burnout. Losing your empathy. I think of this job I had once. I worked on a horse farm for abused and neglected horses and donkeys. 
and we were feeding them in the evening, and my boss's horse kicked her. And we had to call an ambulance, the whole thing. As the ambulance was pulling away, I wasn't thinking, oh gosh, I hope she's okay. I was thinking, ugh, I have to do her job and my job for a while. And that's a key sign that you just, you've lost your empathy. I had completely lost my empathy. Another one, procrastination. I mean, some of us are just prone, sometimes you have to analyze it. Is it just procrastination because you have signed up too many, too many things? Or is it because you don't want to do it? You have to think about why aren't you making these deadlines, which often are self-imposed. Feelings of stress, anxiety, and dread when it comes to participating in the community. I know with HOT, I stopped posting to public mailing lists. I don't know if anyone noticed. But it was because I didn't want to debate with people. And, a lot of, and meaning on even a really low level of not what would normally be an emotional debate. I just didn't want to really converse with people. So you're feeling these things. And when is the time right to change? Sometimes maybe the answer is now, now, now. Like if I think back to when I broke my ankle playing roller derby, uh, maybe being the treasurer then was not a good time. You know, I, I was stuck at home. Uh, I was on narcotics. I couldn't really do math. Not a great time for it. <laughs> Probably would have helped them if I had realized that immediately. Uh, how about after a specific deadline? I think after a release can potentially be a good time if it works for you. And maybe slowly in a tiered approach, you can, with a little self-control, stop volunteering to do things, take on less tasks. I know it's really hard, and I think sometimes a buddy system could be helpful. <laughs> you need your friend to say, no, you don't want to do that. And this has been helpful in leaving the humanitarian open street map team, is I, I have good friends there. And, and one of them won't even talk to me about what's going on in the organization, which, which is good and bad, because I'm still a, mem a voting member of our small 90-member organization. Like, I still have investment in it. But at the same time, I think it is helping separate things, that I can have dinner with her and we can not talk about that. So one of the things I, um, and one of the issues and why I had such a hard time deciding when to change, uh, well, first, let's remember it's never too late to change, but sometimes we do change too late but you can, you can always change your role. The, this was one of the hardest things. So I had, first of all, one of our team, Wulan, painted this for me at my go and gave it to me at our going away dinner. I couldn't leave my team in Indonesia. I had hired every one of them. Some of them I had worked with for four years from being, a men from being an intern all the way up to being a team lead. You know, we had trained thousands and thousands of people in OpenStreetMap. We shared an office with Wikimedia Indonesia. It had turned into this huge program where I was responsible for the salaries of all of these people, as well as HOTS International staff as well. And that just was really hard. But there's a point where you realize you can plan. You can come up with a contingency plan. You can figure out ways for people to you know, continue to have those jobs, continue to have that support. It just might not be you. One of the big things was communicating the change. And depending on your role, sometimes maybe you don't need a big communication strategy. And it's very community de de dependent. But in the case of HOT, we had the board of directors, otherwise known as my bosses, uh, staff, contractors, partners, volunteers, and donors. I had led HOT from a budget of $0 a year to a $1 million a year. A lot of that was from those relationships with donors. And then there's our overall community. Our, in, in 2010, there was an earthquake in Haiti, and 600 people contributed to OpenStreetMap to help with the response. If you look with the Nepal earthquake recently, it was over 7,000 people. So we had grown tremendously. And you know, I care about the community. But as I said before, the staff was the hardest for me. People actually pay their rent based on my, what I do. And I think that's a huge responsibility. So in a well-structured community, maybe you have a clear 
line of who you talk to. Um, I recently was thinking about volunteering with a local nonprofit here, and I was amazed. They had a handout, the volunteer coordinator. It was very clear how you would join. It was very clear how you would change your role. We didn't have any of that. Uh, when the path's not clear, uh, perhaps starting with a confidant. Do you have a friend you can talk to about it? Sort of run things by. Fortunately for me, one of the board members I was quite close, for, close with, and I talked to her about it. And maybe you don't need a big communications plan. Maybe you just need to say that you need to step back. In my case, it took two weeks to let everyone know. I spent a lot of time on Skype, Google Hangouts, the phone, in-person, email, directly communicating with people. I also helped write formal letters explaining the transition plan to our donors. And it was really emotionally taxing. I remember talking to one of our staff I had worked with for a long time, but I had talked to so many other people that day, I wasn't prepared for her to be upset about it because I just was completely emotionally drained. And she was also a pretty reserved person, so I didn't expect to see tears. And I realized I wasn't being that empathetic because I had crammed too many converse, difficult conversations into one day. I'm not sure what would have been a better way to handle it. I suppose I could have tried to schedule them further out, out, but part of it was also making sure I told people before they somehow heard through a grapevine as well. And you know, I was already really emotionally exhausted. I was traveling back, back and forth between Portland and Virginia helping take care of my father. You know, it was, it, it was really, really difficult. Uh, filling the vacuum change can be stressful, but how do you fill the roles to lessen the stress of that change. Unfortunately, I like this slide, but I don't remember, unfortunately, where I wanted it in here. But anyway, finally I said I quit. <laughs> but as I said, not always so simple. So filling the void. Um, I had to write a lot of handover notes. There were a lot of things in my head. I had been working about 80 hours a week for years. I was working as the executive director of the organization and running a half a million dollar program in Indonesia with all of that staff. And so I hadn't spent a lot of time documenting, I had spent a lot of time doing. Um, if, if you're in that situation, if there's someone you can co-work on with those handover notes, our operations manager was invaluable because she sort of knew everything that I did but maybe not all the details, so she could help me make sure I wasn't forgetting things. If you can train others to do the task. So I was able to go to Indonesia one more time and do a handover with the person taking over the program management. And I hope that those two weeks were very helpful to him. Those were actually my two last weeks um, working for HOT. And honestly, sometimes people figure it out. You know, if you're the new person taking over and someone's gone, it's okay to say, hey, I don't know how to do this. I'm missing this account number, whatever it is you can usually figure something out. Okay, so how do you know you made the right decision? Unfortunately, there's not really a scientific method for determining you made the right decision uh, that you can apply, and it's difficult. Uh, for me, these changes are very much a process. Um, I only resigned two months ago. Uh, my father passed away in that time. Like it's been, there's been a lot going on. But I think out of all of that, there has been some positive signs. Um, I've mostly managed to step away. And I've also been more productive in my role with the OpenStreetMap Foundation. So the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team and the OpenStreetMap Foundation are separate organizations. And I serve on the board of the OSMF. I hadn't been doing all of my tasks, basically, or, or had been slower than I wanted to be. And I've really been able to step forward and do those. And, and it's not many, many hours a week of work. It's just making sure I answer emails and do the, thing, the things I'm supposed to do before board meetings. But I've been able to do that. I think part of it is eating, breathing, and sleeping one project was too much. Um, so now I have my boxed open street map time, and then I have my work time. I'm really excited about this new job because we're we're at the beginning, we're building a community. I, I'm the only technical person on the team. It's really a great opportunity. We're building our culture, we're figuring out all those stuff, the stuff that I was not, did not plan for when, we co, when I co-founded HOT. 
that happened organically. We're doing this with intention. So it's a, a new experience for me, and I'm really excited about that. In my personal life, things that I wasn't doing before, I've been walking a lot more, meaning I put my Fitbit back on. I had at some point taken it off because it was embarrassing. <laughs> Let's be clear, my mother often does 20 or 30,000 steps a day, and she's 68 years old. I'm 36. You don't want to see how inactive you're being versus your mother. Um, I joined a gym, and I've been going. I'm reading for fun again. Woo! And I have free time. Like there, I went camping this weekend. I was offline for 24 hours. It didn't matter. <laughs> um, and I had been walking with a limp for two years. I hadn't gone to a doctor just because too much was going on. I went, and it wasn't some major terrible thing that required surgery. There were simple treatments. So I'm st I still walk with a limp, but it's a lot better, and I, you know, are taking, I'm taking care of my health. Uh, I had really forgotten how to have other hobbies, but I'm starting to think about what those might be. It's reminding me of when I graduated from college. I worked full time, I went to college full time. It, after, about a year after I graduated, I was like, wow. I can have hobbies, and I feel that way again. Um, hopefully, I don't dive into those hobbies and make them full-time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so I also wanted to think and talk about the other side of things a little bit. So I wrote this talk and then went camping, and I came back. I was like, OK, well, there's leaving the community, but what about coming in? Um, you know, Instead of lessening your role, what if you're the person on the other side? What if you're taking over for someone who's significantly changed their role? Uh, and what steps do you want to take? So what I was thinking about is what questions I would want to ask. Like, does the community appear to be healthy? Unless you're into trying to fix communities. Uh, you know, first first uh, test, is the handover one you feel you have time for? You know, are, do things. Are things perhaps going to be really messy? Are you the right person? Maybe if the person's really well organized, it seems like it won't, it'll be big shoes to fill, but manageable. Is it a new challenge for you? Will it help you in your personal life, life satisfaction, a career? Or will it just give you the more warm fuzzies? Which is also fine, but you know, are you going to get something out of taking on this role? Do you want to do this, or do you feel coerced? You know, someone can leave, and sometimes people start to look around and say, who can come take, take this on? You don't want to feel forced into it. Uh, back to being the roller derby league treasurer. Probably wouldn't have picked that role, but someone had to do it. I would say no at this time. So when taking over a role, what are the boundaries with communicating with the person who's leaving? I think it's very important when you're leaving and as the person taking on that those taking that on that those are clearly uh, communicated. So with Hot, I know our operation, the operations manager very well. She and I have worked together at previous jobs. You can contact me if you need anything. She's contacted me once, and it was a brief search in my email box, and I could send her the file she needed. So, you know, you don't want to get sucked back into now doing something maybe you were being paid for for free. Another thing that I think it should go without saying, but doesn't. Don't speak badly of the person who was in the role before you. You don't know what circumstances they were in. You don't know what they're going through. And really, it doesn't benefit you. Do you want, the, do you want to be part of a community where if you have to change your role, people potentially are going to speak badly of you? Make sure, just be thankful for people's work. It's also when taking over a role, as I mentioned before, it's okay to say, sorry, I don't know this. Sometimes that could be, feel embarrassing, but people understand. You know, files get lost, as I said before. Account numbers get misplaced. Um, most anything is fixable in some way. Hopefully it's not rebuilding an entire file server or something like that, but generally it's fairly fixable. And also think towards the future. Perhaps you won't be in this role forever. How might you do the job to help with future handovers? Document, all that documentation that we mean to do, but don't always get to. So resigning from the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team 
was the biggest transitions I, transi one of the biggest transitions I've made from an open source community. I'm certainly thinking about how I might do things better. One of the simple things, as I mentioned, would have been better about documenting. The other thing I hadn't thought about was the way I had set up my Google Docs. Because um, very shortly after I left, um, someone came and said, can we just switch the ownership of all of your Google Docs to the new uh, interim executive director? But I'm still a member, I'm still a volunteer. Like, not all of those documents relate. And I said, no, you, you can't do that. I have no idea what's in those Google Docs. I've been using them for five years. Uh, and so it ended up being a more painful process. So if I, if I had thought through that a little, little further, it wouldn't have required going through folder by folder. So in the way I'm working at Cadasta now is we're thinking a lot about onboarding people. And a big part of that is moving out of email when you can, uh, using a content management system. Uh, when I first started, almost all the communication was happening through email or Skype. And I said, well, when we onboard someone, how are they going to find out about this conversation we had? And so we're moving to having those actual conversations somewhere where we can add someone's permissions and they can go actually see that. Um, and we'll see as we onboard people if that helps. Uh, I wanted to take a, for a moment, mention, uh, we're hiring people, by the way. So if you're looking for an engineering or a community director, Roll, come talk to me. Uh, I'm just here today, by the way. So I hope what was a major change for me and what I've learned it was helpful to you. Uh, I always find that things really solidify in my own mind when I give a talk about them, because you have to start to think about how you're going to communicate to others. And I hope it'll help me in making future transitions easier as well. And as I said before, uh, it's never too late to make a change but it's possible to change too late. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you.